welcome to Meki Techie YouTube channel. I would like to thank my mentor, Professor R. Surendran from Government College of Technology, Coimbatore, and my family for the continuous support of creating the creating this kinds of video, as well as Almighty for making me to talk like this. Today's topic is elongation on the composite bar. First of all, what is meant by an elongation? Elongation is a change in dimension. The elongation simply we know it as just a change in dimension is called as an elongation. When the bar will get elongated, when it is subjected to either compressive load or a tensile load, it will tend to elongate. First, we are going to see the formula for elongation of a simple bar subjected to gradual tensile or a compressive load. It is denoted by delta, delta L, that is change in length. Change in length is equal to PL by AE. Here, I would like to notate P as a load, L is a length of the rod, A is the area of the rod and E is the Young's modulus. Next. I would like to share a formula for elongation of a bar subjected to its own weight. So the normal rod uh, delta L is equal to PL by 2AE. That means uh, the own weight, uh, the elongation by means of a own weight is the half the time of when the bar is subjected to either tensile or a compressor load. From this formula, we would inference that. That means P here, the P is uh, transferred to the weight per unit volume of the bar. That is W L square by 2 E. Here, this is uh, the thing. The deformation of a bar under self weight is the half the time of it is subjected to external loading. Next, it is a conical rod. Conical rod uh, delta L is equal to PL by 6 AE that is W L square by 6 E. So this formula indicated that it is elongated by means of own weight. Here you can see that uh, the conical bar is elongated by means of own weight is one third time of the prismatic bar of the same length. Here the since it is a conical bar, the stress, the area is like pi by 4 capital D minus small d into x plus L into d the whole square. Next, elongation in the bar of varying sections. It is like a delta total elongation of length delta L is equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3 and it goes on according to the how many sections we are having. If we can replace delta L into PL by AE, that goes to P1 L1 divided by A1 E1 plus P2 L2 divided by A2 E2 plus P3 L3 divided by A3 E3 and it is goes on. If the load and the material are same, for condition, if the load and material are same, P by E, it is a common term, we take it outside and the formula becomes delta L is equal to P by E into L1 by A1 plus L2 by A2 plus L3 by A3 and go on. Next, it is an important section. Uh, elongation in uniformly tapering section. It is a uniformly tapering section. Therefore, delta L is equal to P L, uh, sorry, rho L divided by pi into capital D into small d where the capital D is the bigger diameter, small d is the small, smallest diameter and therefore delta L is equal to uh, 4 P L divided by pi E into D1 into D2. Here I would like to notate this, the load is inversely proportional to D1 and D2. Load is inversely proportional to D1 and D2. Therefore DU is equal to square root of D1 and D2. Extension extension of uniformly tapering bar to circular of diameter. This is a uniformly tapering bar. 
if we convert it into common uh, same diameter bar means the du is equal to square root of d1 into d2 here i would like to add a point please take a note this strain rosettes are used to measure linear strains only okay this is a one important question uh, most of the competitive exams as well as the in, in the interviews they are asking what is the purpose of strain rosettes whether the strain rosettes will measure the linear dimension or a lateral linear strain or lateral strain or a transverse strain or a shear strain they can ask okay from that you you would like to choose the linear strain is a correct answer and the maximum stress produced in the bore of a tapering section is at the smaller end this this you have to note it down the smaller end is subjected to more amount of stress we know that stress is equal to load by area since the area at the smaller section is very less therefore the maximum stress or a stress is concentrated on the smaller end so bigger end obviously it is having a bigger diameter so huge area so therefore the stress is less next the important note is that elongation of a freely hanging uniformly steel rope if its length is doubled it will increase in the ratio of 4 is to 1 if it is a rectangular section therefore delta l is equal to pl divided by e into instead of a the a becomes t into a minus b log a by b next we go with the composite bar what is meant by a composite bar composite means uh, if two or more different metals are uh, rigidly or uh, materials are together in such a manner that the system can extend or contract as a unit the best example of a uh, composite is v v means our body is a good uh, example of a composite we are having a brittle material called as a bone and there is a huge elongated material like a uh, muscle or a tissue tissues a uh, nose a skin therefore it is a best example of a composite bar so this composite bar will going to handle all the all away the loads extensions etc and etc and loads are by the bar 1 p is equal to p into a1 e1 divided by a2 a1 e1 plus a2 e2 whereas load shared by bar 2 is uh, p2 is equal to p into a1 e1 divided by a2 e2 plus a1 e1 that means here capital p is the total load the the total load is equal to p1 plus p2 that is equal to sigma 1 a1 plus sigma 2 a2 sigma 1 means stress in the bar a stress in the material a area of the material 1 or stress in the material 1 area in the material 1 plus stress in the material 2 and area in the material 2 here you should know the condition that in the composite bar elongation of both bars are same that is strain in uh, first material is equal to strain in second material this equation is called as equation of compatibility that you have to know this you have to know the equation of compatibility is strain in material 1 is equal to strain in material 2 it is comes in the composite section that means load by area into elongation area into ings modulus okay here i would like to insist that uh, instead of strain we know that stress is directly proportional to strain according to the hooke's law and the proportionality constant is the ings modulus since uh, stress is equal to ings modulus into strain here we are having strain therefore strain is equal to stress by ings modulus here for the material stress by ings modulus is there and metal to stress by ings modulus is there we just rearrange the equation the stresses are in one side and the elongations uh, x, sorry ings modulus are in other side here sigma 1 by sigma 2 is equal to e1 by e2 uh, here you should notice that e1 by e2 is called as a modular ratio if you have any question what is meant by modular ratio 
you can suddenly say this is e1 by e2 here the important note uh, at a tensile force if the bar of unif unit elongation in the ratio of 2 is to 5 unit elongation the ratio of 2 is to 5 the ratio of modulus of elasticity of the two material is 5 is to 1 just reciprocal you can notice that just reciprocal uh, that means the elongation or a strain is inversely proportional to Ings modulus or modulus of elasticity and please note the points following points a rod enclosed centrally in a tube and this assembly is tightened by a rigid washer what happen if the compression load is acting both rod and tube is under compression if the both are in tighten the tube in compression and rod in extension next a bar of a copper and steel composite which is heated or cooled okay what happens if heated means the stress is induced stress induced in the copper is compression so we can say it as for c it is c okay copper means compression for a stress induced in steel it is tension st cc if it is cooled what will happen copper get tension and steel get compression next two wires of same diameter and different materials are connected to uh, end to end a force is applied which stretches by 1 millimeter the two wires has same stress and a different strain because the stress is the geometric property whereas a strain is a material property this thing you have to know that the stress is the geometric property y means stress is equal to force by area here one here area is only consideration according to the area the stress will get vary even the forces are same whereas strain we know that strain is equal to stress by Young's modulus so the Young's modulus is the material property according to the Young's modulus the strain get vary therefore stress is the geometric property as well as the strain is the material property so that is all i hope that you have enjoyed the elongation you have a nice session just please subscribe and share the video for getting uh, for for getting motivation for me if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section i, I will uh, clarify your doubts as well as uh, through a video I would like to once again I would like to thank my mentor and almighty and my uh, family and friends as well as my followers and subscribers. Thank you all. Have a nice day.